Hey, what's up, Stringlings? Today we're launching a brand new project for 2023, and I think you're really going to like it. Let's check it out. For the last month or so, we're right at the end of January right now, I've been working with um, boutique pedal builders across Canada uh, with the goal of building the Great Canadian Pedal Board. I've had these incredible people, they're actually just sending me their signature pedals uh, so that we can build a pedal board that really represents the, the the breadth and width of tonal possibilities coming out of boutique handmade um, companies all over the country. And today we're starting off with a builder from Ottawa, Mayfly Audio Systems. And this company started just a couple of years ago, started as a COVID project. And uh, Trevor May has put in a ton of work building an entire series of pedals. He's actually sent me a bunch of them, so we're going to review a lot of them. They're not all going on the final pedal board, but I'm going to run through all of them anyway because they're just so cool. Today I'm starting off with probably my favorite out of the bunch and likely the one that's going to go on the big board. This is his uh, sketchy zebra or zebra as they say on the website. Uh, it's a phase shifter and vibrato. Now, if you don't know what the difference is between vibrato and tremolo, some people get this a little mixed up because on guitars we have this whammy bar thing, and we often call it a trem, a trem system or tremolo bar, and it's not. Okay, the, the big difference is this. A tremolo is a repeated note. A vibrato is a wavering in pitch. They're different things. So when you have a tremolo pedal, what it does is it repeats bop, 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 as you play it at different speeds. The vibrato changes the pitch. So it gives it more of a waver to the pitch. And it's it's a very cool, very spacey kind of effect, but it is a special effect and it, it needs a little bit of a um, little bit of a gentle touch when it comes to it. So we're gonna plug this thing in and I'm gonna give you guys a rundown on how this pedal works and why it's so freaking cool. Okay, so for the demo today, I am working with the Steve Barrett Custom Luonotar model. Uh, this one happens to be built from a solo kit. Um, as you probably know if you've been following the channels, I use solo kits to prototype my guitars. And this is the prototype. This is the first one that's come off the line. Uh, it's upgraded with um, with GraphTech hardware, and most importantly, for the purposes of this demo, these super clutch humbuckers from Peg City Pickups. Um, Chris sent these out to me as a sponsored um, uh, as a sponsorship for this particular guitar build, and Chris is also uh, joining us in the prize package for the great Canadian pedal board. So keep an eye out for that as well. These pickups function uh, both with a split single coil and as humbuckers. I'm going to be using them both depending on the situation. And I have a couple of other guitars as we do more pedals, you'll you'll see them come out uh, all with Peg City pickups in them. Uh, so for today, right now, I'm going to start with the humbucker and I'm going to give you a little rundown on the controls on the pedal itself. The bypass switch, this is more or less your on off switch for the effect. The, the phaser switch on this side switches between the vibrato function and the phaser function. So when this LED is on, it's a phase shifter. When it's off, it's a vibrato. Very, very simple. Uh, there are three controls at the top. I'm gonna set them all to noon to start with, uh, as well as a toggle switch. Now, the speed obviously controls the speed of the phase shift. If you're not familiar with the phase shift, you will be shortly. It's basically, um, it's basically kind of a wave between high and low EQ settings. It's kind of the really basic version of what it does, um, but it's a very, very cool effect. Um, and on this side is the feedback control that gives you sort of the amount of uh, richness and depth in the, in the phase, right? And then in the middle is a manual control. And this one only functions when this toggle switch is up. So when you're in manual mode, it actually lets you pause at some point in that phase cycle so you can act almost like a filter. Uh, and this is a feature that I haven't seen on other phase shifters. Maybe they're out there, but this is the first time I've seen one. My first phaser uh, was a Rock Tech that I paid, I think, $25 for in 1989. Uh, and it was a piece of junk, but my, my, friend's, uh, my friend's dad said it sounded like frogs farting underwater. So. 
you know, take that for take that for what it's worth. But looking at this one, we're going to switch this on now. You're going to hear some clunks. I'm actually going to try to edit them out a little bit because we're on the same desk as the microphone right now. Um, so with the phaser on, currently we're in vibrato mode. Okay, so we might as well start there and you can hear what the vibrato sounds like. And I should say that for an amp, I'm using the ML Sound Labs Humble amp on the clean setting with just a little touch of reverb. Uh, it's just a very good clean uh, pedal platform amp on the front end. Uh, we'll talk about where we put this in the chain later, but as we speed this up, you can hear a little bit more of that kind of vibrato sound with that um, shift in pitch. waver right so it's actually vibratoing the entire chord just like you would do help if i turn that off right and so it's a waver in pitch the feedback gives you a little bit more depth and range to it okay and the speed of course goes from a very slow vibrato which is barely perceptible all the way up to a really fast, slightly chaotic. So you do need to be a little bit careful when you're using that um, with that kind of speed and depth because it can, it can take you out of tune. Right? The, the, the pitch effect makes it sound a little bit out of tune. That's what it's supposed to do. But you want to be very careful that you're not um, uh, working against whatever else is happening in the rest of your mix. Going up to the neck pickup, you can hear... I mean, just a cool sound, right? So when you combine this with other effects, you can get some really cool layers. I'm going to go back to 12 o'clock. I'm going to turn the phaser on. This is a slightly more familiar sound, I think. So you can hear how it's going between kind of a bassy and a trebly sound. And again, if we turn that feedback all the way up, you can hear how much deeper the sound is going uh, through that phase, phase cycle. And when we want to look for those frogs farting underwater I mentioned earlier, we've got to turn the speed all the way up. So when you've got the feedback all the way up, you hear that almost like lasery sound in there. Turn that feedback down a bit, you'll hear a little bit more of a tremolo effect. So the big difference there that you can hear is it's not wavering the pitch, it's attenuating the EQ a little bit. So it's going from a, a, a low pass to a high pass kind of a... a alternating sound. We can do that same sound with a little bit less speed and a little bit less feedback and it becomes just a way to add some thickness to the sound. sounding phaser effect. I'm going to go to a single coil sound. You'll hear a little bit more line noise because it's single coils and it kind of cleans up a little bit of the back end of the sound so you get some a uh, little bit more clarity on the effect. There it is.
So just a nice way to, to thicken up the sound, give it some shape, give it a little body. Going to the neck pickup. Turn the speed up a little bit so we get a little different texture. It just sounds so cool. <clears throat> now, I had mentioned before that we're looking at this manual switch. Now, when we flip this guy up to manual, this is the control that takes over. So nothing else. The um, feedback control doesn't really do as much as it does with the full effect. The speed control does nothing. It's completely taken out of the mix. What does the work is this manual control in the middle, and that is the one that gives you the opportunity to choose almost almost like a filter. So it gives you that, um, like I said, like a filtered sound, almost like a cocked wah kind of effect, uh, which is really neat, especially if you are switching guitars and you want to, you know, you play around with some tones a little bit more. You can actually do them right here um, with this little filter button, which just, to me, that's, that's a game changer for this pedal. Um, going back to the vibrato section for a sec, right? If we go all the way down on the feedback, all the way up on the speed. <clears throat> you get some pretty funky things going on. Come back to the single coils. I'm gonna use both pickups. I had mentioned earlier about placement of the pedal. Now, <clears throat> phasers and flangers and choruses and tremolos and vibratos, they go into a family called modulation pedals. And <clears throat> there's a little bit of debate about where you're going to put them on the pedal board. Uh, some people like them in front of their drive section. So in front of their dirt or in front of a dirty amp, they sound really cool. They give you a like really rich sweep. But remember, when you do that, you're distorting whatever the pedal is putting out. So you need to make sure that you want that distorted when it's coming through. Um, other people, including myself, I prefer to go uh, through all of my dirt pedals first and then my modulation effects and then my time effects and then a clean amp. That's if you're using a distortion pedal or an overdrive outboard. Uh, the ideal way to set it up is actually to put the uh, modulation effects into the effects loop on your amp if you've got an effects loop because that will actually bypass the uh, the drive section um, and so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to show you i've got the same amp this is the the ml sound labs humble amp uh, and i'm using a, a preset with a little bit more distortion listen <laughs> it's going to be doing is distorting the phase effect so it doesn't work as well in my mind some people like that sound it's not my favorite um, you will sometimes hear a little bit more screechy stuff coming from the from the metal folks in the crowd by cranking that speed up and we get but it doesn't work for rhythm. Oof. Not not a good effect. 
Very cool special effect on the lead side. Like I said, just remember you're distorting everything that's coming through. If we go to the, the uh, vibrato effect, same kind of thing, right? There's a coolness to it. Yeah, there's a coolness to it. What I will do later on when we have more pedals coming in, um, uh, for demos is actually pair some of these up. So we'll be able to hear this compared to in front of and behind a distortion pedal versus in front of and behind an effects loop. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, that will do it, I think, for this demo. So let's wrap it up. So that is the Sketchy Zebra or Sketchy Zebra uh, phase shifter and vibrato pedal from Mayfly Audio. Um, one of the coolest pedals I've seen in a long time and we're only getting started on this project so keep an eye out subscribe not just to this channel but to this playlist uh, as well as make sure you check out the socials there is a link to this pedal on the Mayfly website I want you to check that out as well uh, because absolutely very very cool vibe from this company um, and a lot more cool stuff coming up so Check out all the socials you can. Make sure you follow that hashtag Great Canadian Pedal Board. Um, and like and subscribe as much as you can because this is going to be a huge project. And come May, we're going to be starting to collect um, entries for the big giveaway that's happening on Canada Day. Keep your eyes peeled. Stay tuned to the channel. Watch these demos. Buy their stuff. It's all about the pedal builders. Have yourselves a great day.